Hello, Jared here, and I'm back with another video called Challenge Yourself. Uh, I'm not just back with another video, but I'm also back with the cartoon cats. <laughs> a little bit of a hybrid here between the studies, but uh, I have been working very intensely on the studies over the last few weeks, and uh, I have not been messing about. I have definitely been following and doing what I said. Uh, lots and lots of gesture drawings and mannequin studies, tons of figure drawing. Uh, I thought I was going to get into more anatomy, but I realized uh, when I was going to do the anatomy studies, it had told me that I should really work on the figure drawing studies first before I attack anatomy. And I just realized, my God, how far I have to go in this stuff, because uh, it's not just one thing I need to work on. And I was coming to a very real kind of uh, realization that, wow, there is way more to this than I thought. And so you're seeing in this video a little bit of me doing some studies. This is me wrapping up some of those studies. I have a bazillion <laughs> gestures and mannequins and beans and robo beans and all these things drawn. Uh, but I wanted to kind of gear that and push it into practice for some of my characters and uh, in this video, I'm working on my villain, Titus, again, who's gone through lots of redesigns. He was a good guy last year, and now he's a full-blown a-hole villain, kind of a contract killer. And uh, I wanted to attack a new goal of trying to paint something for the first time. Uh, I've never really painted. I've done cell shading and base color and all, and all those basics, but I've never really attacked like a full-blown painting and I see people do that all the time and I normally wasn't interested in that uh, to begin with I'm like no 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 I like cartoons I just want to stick to that but I was like man some of those paintings are so damn good and I was like I should learn just a little bit about that because lord knows I need to work on my color theory I mean that's outside of all this figure drawing stuff so I thought, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a week, a good solid week, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to make my first character painting. So as I back up, when I talked about the studies, I was kind of structuring my path to get through a few certain tutorials and then apply it to a character drawing. So... You know, I would do the studies for the week, and then on the weekend, draw a character applying what I'd learned in the studies. And it hasn't been smooth. <laughs> um, at first, I thought it was. I'm like, oh, you know, this is, this is going well. This is what I need to do. Um, the gesture drawings I had some fun with. I made sure that I tried to do a good job, but um, there's other things like the bean, like drawing beans, like that, representing the torso. And I did okay with those, I think. But what really got me going crazy was the robo beans, where you have to kind of draw the sides of the torso. Like you're actually constructing a robotic looking torso, which forces exact perspective. And that's what was really throwing me off. Like I, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say that I was kind of yelling out loud in my room at my computer monitor, learning this stuff. I, mean, I was like, come on. Like I would, I would do it and then I would compare it to the examples after I did it. And almost every time, and I do mean almost every time, whichever perspective I drew it in, it was done the opposite. You know, normally you say, oh, it's 50-50, you know, you win some, you lose some. No, if I did 20 examples, 19 of them would be wrong. Like, just, I mean, I don't even know if they were wrong, but I assume that the artist that's doing it is probably more correct than me. And I was just losing my mind. Uh, but that was kind of the, the worst part of the studies. Um, but after I applied all that, I went into the mannequin studies. And I think I started getting the hang of it a little bit more. Uh, the mannequins I felt a little more comfortable with. But I must say, they have made me a lot more comfortable uh, doing my character poses and, and gestures. And even some of the, the blogs and sketchbooks that I post on, uh, people have commented that I have definitely... You know, they can see that I've leveled up a little bit just by doing these studies for a couple weeks. So I think these studies are the, the breakthrough that I kind of needed and that I, keep to, I need to keep doing uh, because it is definitely starting to show and I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable with uh, how it's all turning out. Like drawings don't take me as long anymore. I mean, I can do 
something that normally would have taken me a half hour to an hour to do, I'm now doing in 10 to 20 minutes. And I'm not even thinking about it. I just, I know what to look for. And that's what these things teach me. And uh, that's really good for me. So what am I really saying? Uh, studies matter. <laughs> for anyone trying to fight that, uh, shut up. <laughs> you really need to do some studies because if you haven't, I'm telling you, there's a reason schools exist. There's a reason these tutorials exist. Uh, they they really do matter. And no matter how much you think you know something, you're going to learn something. And boy, have I. <laughs> and I'm just getting started. I mean, I'm still near the beginning of all this. I mean, I've attacked a lot of these things. I really tried to sink my fingers into the... The tutorials. I didn't want to just graze over. I wanted to stop on a lesson and just really hammer it out over like a day or two and really just focus because that's how you get the most out of your out of a lesson is doing that. You don't want to just try to go through if there's 20 lessons, you don't want to get through all 20 in a day. That What are you doing? You know, you need to slow down, let your brain retain it, get that muscle memory, get that feeling. So back at the drawing at hand uh, that we see here. This I knew was going to be a painting when I went into it, but I did try to apply all my studies, including the, the gestures and the mannequin studies, and you should be able to see that here. And the, the drawing that's happening, there were some issues, uh, there were some things that I corrected that weren't recorded in the video before I started doing the painting, but uh, the painting did get me a little nervous because I knew what I wanted. I knew how it was supposed to look in my head. Thankfully, I, I can kind of see things in my head a little bit. Uh, I don't have a photographic memory, but I, I like to think that I have a pretty vivid imagination. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have these crazy characters. But I was really nervous because I knew failure was imminent <laughs> because I've never tried it. I knew my color theory was was lacking Aside from the studies I was doing, color was not the thing I was focusing on. I'd never done a painting before, but just as I said in the past videos about embracing failure and comfort zones, I was doing everything, you know, I was doing all of that. I, I knew I was going to fail, and I knew I was going to fail with a smile on my face, and I was okay with that uh, because I wasn't going to quit until I got something that I was happy with. And I did actually fail a few times during this painting where I would do some things and I ran it through a friend of mine and he's like, well, this lighting doesn't look right or this looks flat or the, or the detail is wrong or this is off. And I'm like, what, what? You know, I started, you know, challenging him and I, I have like multiple versions and variations of uh, the, the painting and I go back and I just click through, click through and I'm like, my God, he was right. <laughs> but but that, that's the fun, you know, that's me learning. And, uh, but that was the terrifying part. I didn't know that before. And I was kind of flying blind on this. And I, I had to trust, you know, I just, I'm going to get this done. I don't care what it takes. That's why I gave myself a week. A little bit of a sidestep of this whole endeavor. I was at the gym the other day and, you know, there's a whole bunch of guys in there and everyone's got on their sport wear and I saw this one guy, he had a shirt that made me laugh. And <laughs> if you don't know Nike's logo, uh, just do it. Well, his was just like that. And I'm sure people, some people have seen this shirt, but it said doing it. <laughs> and it's just the fact that, you know, all these guys in there, just, you know, the bro madness and lift weights, get it done, you know, push through, got to break through. This is the shirt that says doing it. And it's so simple, but it makes such a statement because when you think about just do it, it sounds like someone complained and then you have someone else saying, get up off your ass and just do it. And then you got this guy just going doing it. There's nothing else to say. Just doing it. You know, quit thinking about it. Quit being told to do it. Doing it. And I know it's so stupid. It's just I thought about that and I kept thinking about that. That's why I'm bringing it up, bringing it up in this video, because I think that's sometimes a little important is where you can get so wrapped up into thinking about doing something and then getting afraid of all the what ifs and the failures that you just, you stop yourself and no, just, just do it. What do you have to lose? I mean, 
You're going to make something bad? Okay, well, I'm sure Picasso made something bad. I'm sure Leonardo da Vinci made something bad. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to be perfect. And I, I went into this just just not doing well. <laughs> and uh, I, I, just, I just think that's an important part to bring up. And while we're on the subject of the gym, a buddy of mine that I go with, uh, we talk about a lot of these things, you know, about, you know, what what separates people with success. And uh, he he's pretty passionate about working out. Um, and he told me a quote that Arnold Schwarzenegger had said. And if you don't know who Arnold is, who the hell are you? <laughs> Go watch Terminator 2 at least. Good God. Um, but uh, there was a quote that he said that can be applied to just about anything in life that you're trying to succeed at. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. The last three or four reps is what makes the muscle grow. This area of pain divides the champion from someone else who is not a champion. That's what most people lack, having the guts to go on and just say they'll go through the pain no matter what happens. That is a very important thing to remember. And we he knows that I do art. He knows that I've been just trying to work my ass off of this art stuff over the last year and a half. And we, we talk about how many parallels there are uh, to just someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger hitting the gym and someone trying to hit the stylus on a Wacom tablet. You know? <laughs> but uh, th- it's so true. Think about th- anyone that's had great success has just relentlessly pushed through just like a speeding truck. Like you just knock anything out of your way and you go no matter what happens. And that's part of the challenge. You know, you can sit there, but after you hit a couple walls, your arm starts to hurt. And that's what Arnold's talking about, is that when you feel that, you have to keep going. Because there's a lot of people that will give up. And and if you keep going before you know it, you're still running and everyone else is in the back. So back to the painting, not only did I need to figure out what the hell I was doing, uh, I was also trying to find a workflow It was pretty interesting as I kept going how my process was adapting uh, where I would first start out like, okay, I think I need to start it this way and then I'm going to make this layer because I wasn't doing a one layer painting. I know there might be some peers out there that will criticize me for that, (laughs) but deal with it. I'm a digital artist, so I'm going to do layers. I like non-destructive editing and I don't like to hit control Z a bazillion thousand times. So I do layers. Screw it deal with it. (laughs) But uh, what I figured out is as I kept going, I realized, okay, this is how I have to do it. And this is how I have to do it. And then I started finding a system. And for being painting number one, it kind of gets me a little amped like, okay, if I did this again, I know I would be faster and I would be more efficient doing it. Because I'm I'm getting more, I mean, not to sound, I don't know, egotistical I feel like I'm getting more clever with uh, the method in order of attacking it and uh, that's you may see that in this video I'm not sure if it's going to show that uh, but I was able to start separating things by parts like the jacket and the collar and the shirt and the tie and the pants and the belt and, and the hands and I started doing that and then focusing just on those regions and then breaking it down with like two or three key layers, like a color layer, a shade layer, a main base layer. And uh, that's what I was finding out. Now, I know I did a method. I kind of had a hybrid of methods between the color. I kind of went a cheating route where I've seen the technique done, but I know it's not the most reliable. And that's where you do a black and white shade layer. Like you just keep it all black and white values, which will help. Like it's a lot easier to focus only on values than to add the color part. And there was a couple parts of the body that I did do full blown color and I struggled with it a little bit, but then I went to the black and white values and then I put a, put a color layer over that. And then you just pick a color and you paint the black and white, but that's not a very good method in doing that because you can run into problems. I've seen some other artists talk about that, uh, where it's not a hundred percent tried and true, where for some reason colors are treated a little weird in Photoshop. I think green was one of the big problems. I'm, I don't know if that's what's going on, but it worked for me for this painting. 
but you know, I eventually I'm going to have to take off the training wheels and start working more than just in values and then just painting it over. I believe I didn't have the head or the shirt shown in the video when I painted them. Those are the first things I started with. And I just didn't want any pressure because that was when I started the painting for real. And I'm like, I need to, I need to focus on this only. But then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start recording. Screw it. <laughs> but it is what it is. I struggled. I had nights where I had to do entire paint overs. And I actually planned on putting a background to this. But as I started doing it, I realized it was detracting from the composition that was taking the eye and focusing on other areas of the painting. And that's what made me feel good is the fact that I thought about that. I'm like, you know, sometimes more or less is more. <laughs> and I was halfway into doing the background. I'm like, nope. And I deleted all of it. And I think it worked out better by doing that because um, it conveys it's a stronger representation of the character and that's something that you can forget about you can get so wrapped up in technical exercises that you forget about the composition and I tried to make sure I remembered that this time so I know there's been some weird transitions as I've probably cut this video uh, not all of it got recorded but it's just to kind of show you what's going on uh, but I I'm pretty happy the way it turned out and I have yet to have it critiqued <laughs> I'm pretty nervous about that actually but it's okay, because I'm happy with it. Um, this is my very first painting, and uh, I'll just go ahead and show the reveal, because I know I need to wrap this video up. So here it is, drum roll. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm such a goofball. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and putting up with my ramblings. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Comment, like, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.